People who had a teacher change their life. Who was your teacher and what did they do? My year 9 class teacher. I was going through a tough time with my grandma's death and my sister leaving town for college. She counseled and guided me through those times. She gave me responsibility as class prefect for distraction and confidence. It was a small gesture but she stood by me in a way I'd never forget. Mine was my 10th grade history teacher. He only taught conspiracy theories like how America caused Pearl Harbor or how the bank is trying to get as much gold as possible to eventually rule over us. At the end of the year I told him that I could easily be a better teacher than him and now I'm getting a history education degree. That was his plane all along. I had a teacher in high school I used to hate because his tests were impossible to pass. All the classroom would fail and he couldn't care less. Instead of dumbing down the tests, he made us work loads to achieve his expected level of knowledge. He would teach us the mathematics we needed and taught us the kind of reasoning we needed to put into our work. It was heck at first, but at the end of the year we all improved significantly. In our final year, we were able to solve problems taken from university tests and be really confident about math and logical reasoning. He cared about us. We were ahead of the national curriculum and really enjoying being able to understand the hard stuff. Thank you for believing we could be pushed more and challenging us every day, Mr. F. I am a math teacher named Mr. F. I hope that was me and if so, I'm still super proud of you. Actually, I'm super proud of you either way. My teacher in high school had a sign outside stating don't let school distract you from your education. I felt that. My year 5 teacher was awesome, and really encouraged me to embrace my eccentricity I was always quite a stage girl. One time I'll never forget was when our class was playing cricket, and I was batting for my team. I hit a powerful shot and hit him straight in the privates, whilst bent over and almost crying in pain. He still managed to wave at me to keep moving, and win that run. Thank you Mr. Crocker, I hope wherever you are you're happy. One of the most memorable things a teacher ever said to me that actually had a big impact on my life was, I really like you as a person, but I hate you as a student. My French teacher told me this when I was in high school. During this period where I was really depressed and self-destructive and on the verge of flunking out, having her be so honest with me and pointing out that I was wasting my potential, but at the same time saying I was a good person, made me want to do better and eventually I did. My French teacher said something similar to me but not so dramatic. She said something along the lines of, When I meet you around the hallway you are a real gentleman but in class you are just really annoying. This year is my second year with her as a French teacher and now I have to say that we get along pretty good and I understand that she is a brilliant teacher. I used to hate her. I'm fortunate enough to, to have had two. The first was my high school physics professor that really encouraged us to think about where we came from, why we're here, and to just generally be inquisitive. The second was in college. This professor taught me dynamics and controls, engineering. He was the kind of guy that made you think you could learn anything by the way he explained things. Like, every difficult concept this guy explained was made much more clear and understandable the way only somehow with extremely thorough knowledge could do. He was also a really nice guy to talk to, which I did a lot because his class was so difficult. He motivated me to get off my butt and finish my degree and go to grad school. The biggest thing these two taught me? You don't know crap. Commit yourself to a lifetime of learning and go experience things. My microelectronics professor saw me in the hall and asked if micro was going to be my specialization. I said no, at the time it was control systems. He told me you should reconsider that I was really good at microelectronics. I had never realized I was good at it. I switched my specialization and it really make a positive impact on the rest of my engineering degree and career. Back in school I stopped giving a frick in 7 8th grade due to the constant bullying. I was an introverted shy kid already. The bullying just made me go deeper into myself. I spent hours in my own imaginations. Then one day they taught about the electric bell and how it works. It struck my interest and I read about after going home. There was a test on it, I aced it. Teacher couldn't believe it and she asked me if I cheated on the test. That was kind of the wake up moment for me. I said no I didn't cheat feeling offended that she even asked. 
to spite her. I tried studying physics and I found it interesting. More than the novels I checked out from the library on a daily basis. A year later I was one of the top 3 students in the class. Today I have a masters in physics and trying to get into a doctorate program. I thank her whenever I go back to my town and run into her. Teacher did you cheat? You know and I'll prove it goes and gets masters degree. My year 6 teacher. Her name was Lynn. I was never a special kid, but she always made everyone feel like they were equal and special in their own way, something that most teachers don't do. We even had special nicknames for each other xd. She offered me advice whenever it seemed like I needed it, I never asked. When it was my last day, she gave me the most comforting hug ever. It was almost like motherly love. Even now, years after, I come back to her to talk to her about everything, and she still gives me the best advice and laughs at my crappy jokes. My year 7 teacher really pushed me to become more active in class. This was new to me at the time because growing up in my country, PH, looking different often warranted discrimination. Her talks and her general determination to get me speaking my mind more eventually flipped a switch inside of me. She became my second mother and was always there to push and support me every step of the way. Since then I've locally competed in public speaking and acting, and recently won a medal in an international talent competition. I really owe her all my achievements. I'd still be quite the shutdown if it weren't for her. My junior year I had an algebra teacher named Mrs. Vengeance. I really struggle with math and no matter how hard I tried I was either always failing or on the verge of failing her class. Mrs. Vengeance put me down as student of the year for her class. I went to her class every single day after school and would spend at least an hour going over the assignments she had covered that day. She wrote that if she none of her students try as hard as I had been. I graduated, barely, went to cosmetology school and then met my husband and became a farmer's wife. After we had our third child, I started a non-profit giving free diapers and any needed baby items to any family in need within our county. Since we opened in 2018, we've given out 23,000 diapers. If Mrs. Vengeance hadn't believed in me, I wouldn't have had the courage to try to make the world a better place for our children. I hope and pray my own kids have a teacher like her. I hate math too. Dyscalculia is awful. Lost all interest in drama when first my high school and then college drama teachers both explained that there's no such thing as acting. Every actor just reads out lines while portraying their own native personality, and that no one was ever going to be interested in seeing me being myself on stage. Also the college professor, who admits she only typecasts, cast me as a racist. As an actor, this is without a doubt one of the stupidest things I have ever heard an educator say. I'm sorry this negatively impacted your view on acting. It is never too late to start, if you haven't kept up with it. My senior year English teacher. I was always a fairly troubled kid, couldn't really relate to anyone in school. I think somehow she knew this despite me never saying it. She went out of her way to include me in class discussions, offered to let me eat lunch in her room and just talk with me and be my friend. I think what I liked most about her was that she treated me like an equal, unlike other teachers who saw themselves only as an authority figure. Still friends with her to this day, and she definitely turned me into the person I am now. I had a support teacher who helped me realize being an angry rebellious teenager was going to get me nowhere. I still talk to him via email over 10 years after graduating. Fun story. My elementary teacher was one of those people who would love kids with rich families, and let the poorer kids struggle. I am not the son of a famous medical doctor, nor of a famous politician. So I was in the strugglers group. The last day of elementary school she came up to me and told me you will be a garbage man when you grow up, cause you have no skills and that's the best life scenario for you. Pretty fricked of her to say something like that to a kid. Fast forward to a few years. I know more languages than she does, I'm on my way to finish university with a 3.8 GPA and have raised thousands of dollars in 2 years. If I am motivated today it is because of that lady. Sometimes you have to have some doubters to show the best part of you. BTW, I know garbage men and women who are 10x smarter than my teacher. I think actual garbage is smarter than that teacher. 
I took US history since 1865 as an elective in college, and that professor fostered a love for history that remains to this day. He would get up and lecture for an hour straight and be absolutely fascinating. He had a way of tying current events to events in the 1800s in ways that blew my mind. I don't remember his name, but I am forever grateful. This will get buried but, my IT teacher from high school completely changed my life in three ways. The first one was that instead of doing the work we were supposed to do during one lesson I kept surfing the internet. He knew about it but he liked me so he didn't care that much. During that lesson I stumbled upon a YouTube video of someone who would later become my, now ex, boyfriend for almost 4 years. The second one was that he knew I was into music making so he talked me into participating in a project where I was supposed to compose music for a video game. I did a lot better than I expected, or anyone, I guess, which led to me realizing that I should consider working on my skills. Eventually I used the video game music as a part of my application for university. Currently I'm studying musical composition thanks to the ripples he caused. The third one was that instead of teaching us what he was originally supposed to he taught us programming. In the school book he wrote specially for those lessons he listed his reasons for doing so, with one of them being that we could make a living out of it. I came across that school book when I was looking for a job and decided to actually learn what he was trying to teach us back then. It worked, and now I'm able to make a decent living instead of becoming a teacher like most of my classmates. So he indirectly put me on the path of an unpractical career choice while offering me a solution for the money problem that all artists have to face. To this day he has no idea. It is buried, but I read it. He sounds like great teacher, the opposite of my experience. Unfortunately, good luck with the music composition. It's amazing what can be accomplished when doing something you love. A substitute teacher I only had for a few weeks when I was about 7. She exposed me to the first classical music I'd ever heard and encouraged me to do art as much as I could. I made her a wax crayon picture of fish under the sea and she acted like it was the Mona Lisa. She made me feel like the most special kid she had ever met which I desperately needed at the time. My second year high school English teacher. She gave me a simple one on one and told me that I'm smart. It's just that I half butt things so I always end up in the middle. It didn't even occur to me that I was like that so I exerted more effort when it comes to my studies. I ended up graduating with honors in high school and continued the same study habit in college. It was a simple talk but up to this day, I always consider that conversation as a turning point. It only took one person to make me realize my potential and that changed my freaking life. I haven't really thanked her personally for it since she already moved to another country, but hopefully someday. My first year of primary school a teacher slapped me or called me liar because my father had the same name of the father of the kid sitting next to me. She thought I was copying it from him and she thought that it would justify slapping hard a 7 years old kid. From that time on I've barely opened my mouth ever again. Today I don't talk, I'm paranoid. I can't make friends and sometimes I have suicidal thoughts. Track her down and slap her back that's how you undo the curse. My third grade teacher. I recently moved from California to North Carolina. I was actually super optimistic about this as a child. So being 8, I try and socialize with other students because that's what kids do I guess. I wish I was exaggerating when I say this, but she sent me to the back of the class to sit alone for about 95% of the year because of either not paying attention, or talking to other kids during class. Very rarely, if I got to socialize with other kids it was specifically Mondays. That's because you don't get homework on Fridays in elementary school and not doing homework meant no recess. I didn't really ever do homework because my home life was not great, lots of verbal abuse in the household, but this isn't about that. So, when you're a child, sitting alone not paying attention to class, what are the things you do to entertain yourself? I made up games inside of my own head and just did things in my corner of the class alone, trying to do anything to help this, as I'm not paying attention. Just in my own head, silence slowly follows. I look up from my desk and my teacher is just looking at me, saying nothing until she got my attention. 
This made it so literally every other kid in the class eventually just looked at me with her, just staring at me like something is wrong with me. I've never seen a group of 20 something 8 year olds act so dang mature in this kind of situation. Just watching me and probably thinking look at this dumb freaking kid. Pay attention like the rest of us or something. I have no idea. This has happened multiple times during that year, and is definitely the reason I still have social anxiety to this day. 16 years later. Social anxiety has gotten better over the last two years in particular, but it still exists and is a problem. At least it's gotten better to the point where I have now been shown that my general anxiety is even worse. That's pretty cool at least s. I'm sorry. In HS I was a huge butthole, late 90s. I'm not sure what was wrong with me. I bullied this girl in my health class pretty frickin hard. She was so weird and would always says things like how her dad hit in the head with hammers and just all sorts of messed up things. I thought she was making it all up to get attention or something since she kind of waved it around like a badge. Our class did one of those paper bag mailbox things and I left her really crappy notes in hers. Like I can't even remember how awful it was but I know it was awful because all of my awful friends thought it was freaking great. I seriously hurt this person. My words tore this person to pieces and our teacher was having none of IT. She didn't do the normal things and write me up or send me to ISS or call my mom. She made me do detention for her. When I arrived the girl and her foster mom were there. She made me face them. Made me listen to them both. Made me listen to them tell me how sick I made them feel for writing such mean fricked up things. I cried. I cried. I cried. I apologized. I have never been the same about taking someone else's story for granted. She never made those things up. Not all of them. He life story was like playing a game of two truths and lie that you had to guess it because she had been through so much trauma. She changed my life. I'm so sorry for the things I did and said. I know that nothing can erase them. Nothing will ever remove them from this girl's life or memory now. I did this to her. I was the one that added another scar on top of so many already there and I had to face myself as the real monster and poser. I'm so grateful to have been able to change but holy crap I'd never seen someone so disgusted and disappointed with me until that moment. I'd never felt so disgusted and disappointed until then. I will forever remember this one teacher that protected someone like that while at the same time helping the aggressor off a dark ledge. He was never my direct teacher. He was head of IT at my secondary school and I just hung out in his classroom every lunch and break for two and a half years. He got me into comics and graphic novels, showed me my first introduction to what I now consider proper sci-fi like Blade Runner and Dune. He gave me a CD with so many comics on it just to expand my limited scope of media. He led me through some rather dark times at that school, and we bonded over a lot of jokes and niche trivia which we now knew. I can't know if I grew up to be the person he wanted me to be, and I can't contact him anymore because of a mistake I made. I think about him sometimes and regret the things I did, and it is one of the few permanent scars I still carry with me. Had an English teacher who was a white South African. In Australia, they are overwhelmingly among the most racist people you will ever meet. This guy was very different. He'd left the country, not as a refugee but as an emigrant of conscience, during the 80s, and hadn't returned until after 94. One text we studied was Cry Freedom, and it had a huge impact on me. I was in a school where the nastiest forms of racism were the norm. We're not just talking Holocaust denial, we are talking students who outright thought the problem with the Holocaust was that there were survivors, and would say this to the face of the Jewish student. I was never that bad. But casual racism I was fine with. I was the sort of racist kid that didn't think of myself as a racist. This teacher managed, somehow, to completely change my worldview. Probably in just one term. Unfortunately, he is probably dead now. He grew up before the polio vaccine. And had a lifelong disability as a result of contracting the disease as a kid. If alive he'd be in his late 70s. But he didn't look well enough to make it the 20 years. For me it's a current teacher. I used to hate maths and never did any work on it, ever. Then I went to a new school and the maths teacher is so enthusiastic about it and genuinely cares. I'm now the 7th best in maths in my class. I enjoy it now, quite a lot. I went to a very special primary school. It was privately owned, on a farm. 
and was more or less a Waldorf Steiner school. I realize this sounds like it could be almost cult-like, but I promise it wasn't. It was just a very special little place. The principal and primary teacher there changed my life. It's not one specific thing she did for me. Of course, she taught me how to paint, sing, make music, write, take care of cows and pigs and chicken and geese. She gave me a solid basis of the classical myths, Greek, Roman, Old Dutch, the Edda, etc. Most of all, it was just the way she was, I guess. I'm 32 years old and I still sort of carry her voice with me in the back of my mind. First came to the US not knowing a lick of English and sat in a classroom all day feeling anxious and confused but essentially just played follow whomever is in front of you and mimic. I was in the third grade and scared when an old white guy named Mr. Mango came in and looked right at me and started speaking Spanish fluently. I jumped and went with him for tutoring three times a week for two hours a day. In six months this patient and beyond reasonable man taught me to not only speak, read and write English but master it to the point where I no longer could get picked on for having an accent. I won so many awards at the end of the school year for being academically successful and improving exponentially from where I first started. At the awards he was not present but I was desperate to give him the credit he deserved. 20 plus years later I had grown up and did very well in all means of communication and was highly adaptable to most circumstances. Heck even joined the military and served two tours all the while remembering I couldn't be anywhere near what I was without knowing language. Then I started a family did all the things you're supposed to do. When one night while taking my kids trick or treating. Go figure this story actually happened during Halloween a few years ago. I ran into an old buddy from high school who asked if I remembered Mr. Mango. I told him heck yeah I remember him that man is a legend and I owe my life to him. He said he's still around and is mid 80s but still the same and at his church. Needless to say I was dying to see him again so we went with my family and all. There he was handing out candy out of the trunk of an old beater still the same hero I have always known since I was a tiny kid in third grade and I ran to him broke down and told him he meant everything to me and how thankful I was for everything. He taught me that one year together. I had a family. A life filled with endless opportunities thanks to this one man. He couldn't remember me but he hugged me back and as kindly as always just said I've never heard this happen before with one of my students thank you for telling me this. I replied you always have been and always will be my hero mister. Mango I love you man thank you. We just sat there for a good while just like before teacher and student and my kids learned that day that even their dad has a hero. Almost all of my teachers at community college changed my life for the better. My high school years sucked, and I was a very bitter and unhappy person by the time I graduated high school. The atmosphere at community college was entirely different. The professors actually took the time to get to know you on a personal level, which motivated me to learn and better myself as a person. After I graduated community college and transferred to a four-year university, I was actually a happy person who was motivated to do my best. Community colleges are great. I had a super positive experience at the one I went to and it got me to take school more seriously and got me ready for university. I had a great teacher for anatomy and physiology. I took microbiology just because he taught it and found my interests were in biology. Changed my life. My 6th grade teacher. He was a teacher who had many years of experience and knew how to teach and talk to kids. He was an amazing guy, super funny in class and even made the boring lessons entertaining. During 6th grade, I wasn't in the best place of mind, I was insecure and I hated myself. I had talents and hobbies, but I didn't feel like I had a plan for the future or any real motivations. I felt down and empty all the time. He had a book he would read before the beginning of every writing lesson. He came to school one day with a sore throat and asked if anyone wanted to read the book other than him that day. I volunteered. He said that I made the book very expressive and interesting to listen to, as if I was a voice actress reading out the lines for a game or show. I remember feeling so happy that day. The class had also liked me. For the rest of the year, I was the one who read before writing class. I felt so happy and always came to school just to hear his praise after I read out a book, as silly as it was. His sore throat ended up giving me confidence. I've answered this before so here is a sum up. Teacher gave bad information in church class. Local bishop backed him up. 
made me think if they are right why should I go to church. I've never gone back. They played themselves. My primary teacher, Mrs. Reg, name barely changed to be more apt, taught me very early on not to be an assumptive C. Earn OTN, you must not be an assumptive C. I've talked about this a lot already in other places so I'll keep this on the shorter side. I had a teacher in college who I liked enough to regard as a close friend. We were always very friendly with one another, and this really helped my confidence grow drastically from what it was when I met her. My experience with teachers as a whole was terrible. They weren't all buttholes, but none of them seemed to care about students as individuals. I don't talk to her anymore but I'll still remember all of the ways she helped me. Really glad to have met her. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.